Hi guys, this is Alex, and I'm going to give a brief introduction to using format strings to exploit a C binary. For the purpose of this explanation, I'm going to assume that you have a rough understanding of how the 32-bit C calling convention works, but it's not strictly necessary to understand everything that's going on. It's a brief reminder. We're going to talk, we'll be talking about the function printf, and when the function printf is called, what it expects to be above it on the stack is the return address pushed by the function that called printf, and then the format string, and then all any any args. Now, since printf is a variadic function, it doesn't know how many arguments there are, and so it requires it must examine this, the format argument to figure out how many of these arguments there are. Printf, if the format string is poorly defined, or if we control the format string, we can make printf think that there are more arguments than there actually are, and what's it going to do? It'll just happily walk up the stack and look at something random and think that that's an argument. This is the behavior we'll be taking advantage of. Printf has a couple other features we'll be using to take advantage of this. So first of all, you can specify a width pre precision modifier in your printf. And so you can, for example, this argument, this function call, will print the value 1, but pad it to be at least 1,000 bytes wide. In this case, it will be a bunch 999 spaces followed by the number by the character 1. Um, printf also allows us to select a specific argument rather than having to go in order. So we can do percentf $2$x. And what this will do is it'll select the second argument. You'll note here, we could pass anything we want there instead of just a 2. And, and, and for example, we could pass percent $200 sign x. And you'll note here that there's no arguments explicitly passed to printf. So what will it do? It'll happily walk up the stack and select the thing that it thinks is the 200th argument and print that. This is pretty powerful, um, and but it is not nearly as awesome as the feature of printf that allows us to percent n. And what percent n does is it, it writes the number of bytes emitted by printf to standard out to the variable sum variable. You'll note, of course, uh, in this case it'll write the value 0 to sum variable because be at the point percent n is encountered, it'll have encountered it'll have emitted 0 bytes. We can also use percent hn to write the value as a short and only write 2 bytes at a time. So when we put all these together, we can do percent f 100x percent two dollar sign hn. And what we'll do is we'll write the value. It'll the printf will emit 100 bytes for the zero, and then we'll write the value 100 to the short sum variable. Okay, that's interesting and all, but how do we use this for an actual exploit? Well, here's a little function that has has an takes some arguments in a stack and is about to call the function printf. Since it's about to call the function printf, it pushes onto the stack the format string, and then it you know, will call printf and push onto the return address. Now printf will look, well, it, printf, of course, uh, expects, this is what a printf expects. Um, but we control the format string so we can do whatever we want with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to attempt to write to an arbitrary address. Um, specifically, we're going to write we're going to write to the address four one four one four one four one, and we're going to write the value percent p percent p percent p percent p. Now, what the string does is it allows us to search for this sum address. Okay. Well, but you see, percent p percent p percent p percent p has five arguments, and printf wasn't passed any arguments. Remember, when printf is called, what it expects is the format string and all of the arguments to be passed on to it up the stack. Um, and when it sees the couple, it doesn't. It isn't aware of the fact that there's two stack frames above it. It just sees it all as its arguments. And so, what printf will print here? It'll print f the value zero, followed by uh, the saved EVP, which is in this case some stack address, the return address, which is some code address, um, and then four one four one four one. Okay, so. We were able to get this with a bunch of percent p's, but we want to be a little bit more precise than this. And so we can use the percent four dollar sign x well, p to select just the fourth argument, our sum address. All right, cool. This works. Now, uh, 
Now what, now what can we do with this? Well, we're going to use the, we're first going to write 100 bytes to the screen and then print our pointer. And now we can write 100 bytes and then percent for dollar sign n and, and then we'll have written the value 100 to the address 4141441. Okay, this looks interesting and all, but how do we use this in an actual exploit, you tell me? Well, here's what I say. Let's, con let's do an actual exploit. Here's a little simple program with a printf and then a stir dupe. Um, uh, now we're going to use the printf vulnerability, and what we're going to do is we're going to overwrite the stirdoop function to rather than being stirdoop, instead be system. And so in order to do this, we need to have the our argument is will be first passed to printf, and it will be used as a format string, and then it will be passed to stirdoop, and it will be used as an argument to system, remember? So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the program, and I'm going to give it the give it the argument this python thing now for reference i'm doing this in python so that i can get uh the the escape characters to work cleanly now anyways so i do the print i do printf and the first four bytes are sh semicolon hash which in bash looks like the command sh followed by a comment so it'll so that it'll ignore the entire rest of the line which is great for us because we want it to execute sh and we don't want it to attempt to execute the random garbage we're going to pass it and then the AAAA and the BBBB are placeholders for addresses we're going to put later. Now remember, this this thing will be somewhere on the stack because it'll be an argument to to main. And so we, if we search it far enough on, on the stack, we'll see this AAAA BBBB. And so that's what the string of percent %p's is. It's searching for the R pointers. And when we run it, we see we'll output the sh semicolon AAAA BBBB like we expect, and then it'll output all of the pointers in the world, um, and eventually it'll output 4141442442. And so we'll know that we'll have selected our pointer. We'll ha well, those are the correct offsets. So let's pretend that those are 42 arguments at the stack and 43 arguments at the stack, respectively. And so we'll modify our format string to print out just them. And indeed, here, this is what we get. For one, you know, we, we get the, the preamble like we expected, and then 4141414242422422. All right. Now we know that our offsets are correct, we have to figure out what we want to write with them. Well, remember what we talked about earlier, what we're going to be modifying stirdoop to instead call system. And if we look at the binary itself, we see that stirdoop has this complicated little function pointer PLT thing. What's going on here is when you compile a function uh, and, you, and you depend on libc or some library, uh, when you compile it, you don't know where those functions are in memory because um, usually they'll be randomized or something or you want to have them all loaded together. And so what you do is you instead put these little stubs that do nothing more than have a function pointer that points to the actual offset. And so at compile time, you can have things you can jump to and be happy. And then at runtime, these function pointers are modified to actually point to the actual uh, location in memory of the sturdoop function which it will be somewhere in the libc. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this function pointer and we're going to modify it to instead of pointing to stirdoop, point to system. And where, do, where is system? Well, we open up the program in GDB, we break it main, and we can just print the value of system. Um, <coughs> assuming that libc isn't randomized, which it isn't on the shell.picoctf.org, .com, um, we can just run this once and then we'll know where system is from then on. All right, so now here we have, we have, we printed the value system. So, uh, and, and you can see, this is the place in memory where system is. So, ultimately, we're going to be writing the value system, the address of system, to the stirdoop function pointer. So the first thing we do is we run our format string again, and this time we plug in the actual addresses we want to write to. And in this case, we, we plug in 0804A004, and we note that we have to put it in little endian. And what I'll output is sh semicolon hash, as before, and then some garbage bytes. Well, the garbage bytes are because uh, the 04A0, A04, and A08 aren't actually printable characters. But then we'll see that the, the two addresses we actually want to print are printed. Okay, now how do we write to these addresses? And what are we going to do? The first thing we realize is we want to write you know, some same number of characters. We have to write these some number of characters to standard out. And we don't want to write a zillion characters to standard it out, so we're going to do it in two steps. First, we're going to write, you know, some number of characters to to write the first but two bytes of the pointer, 
to standard out, and then we're going to write the number of bytes necessary to write the second pointer to standard out. Um, and how many point bytes do we write? Well, the first is we have to write b2 f0 total bytes before we hit the percent hn. And we know we've already written 12 bytes, right? We've written the sh semicolon hash and the two pointers that are each four bytes wide. And so this means we have to write additional 4, 5, 6, 3, 6 bytes. And the same thing with the upper two the upper two bytes. We've written a total of b250 bytes so far, and we want to write a total of b5 bf7 e6 bytes. And so we need to write an additional 17814 bytes. All right. So to recap, first thing we're going to do is we're going to emit an additional 45,636 bytes, and then we're going to percent hn to write to the, the bottom two bytes of the, of the function pointer. Then we're going to write 17,814 more bytes and do percent hn to write to the top two bytes of the pointer. So we plug this in, and we get you know, the sh semicolon and the garbage bytes written as before, and then lots and lots and lots of bytes written to screen, and then the two pointers we ask. And we can actually we actually know exactly how many of these bytes were written to screen, right? It's the seventeen thousand whatever bytes as before. All right. Well, so what we do is now we change them to use percent hns and we get our shell. Um, and of course, if you don't get a shell here, what you really ought to do is put a breakpoint right after the call to printf. Um, and make sure and then print out the function pointer we saw before to make sure you get that address. But there you go. That's how you use a printf vulnerability.